In 2001, I received an envelope from my mother and several newspaper articles announcing the fact that the Woolworths in North Carolina had become a civil rights museum and that mother was a guest of honor. This place for, for young people represents a place of looking forward into the future and wanting to make the world a better place. So this lunch counter is in its original setting. Great. Wow. 1960, on uh, February 1, there was America's first sit-in on the East Coast in the Woolworths in Greensboro. And four black men went to sit down at the white-only counter. And she read the newspaper that they were here, and she said to her friends, I'm going to go down and join those boys. I am not going to sit here and not take part. Mother got kicked out of school. She was going to UNC. Now have access to the letters um, from the school that uh, said how inappropriate her behavior was and that she was not allowed to stay on campus. Mother constantly was showing us that mm -hmm. a person can do the right thing in the right time and put down, put down their fear, their, their fear of losing something of their yeah. own to make a big impact. I had no idea that my mother had been involved in the civil rights revolution and I had no idea really who she was. I found myself quite emotional and I had to take a moment to avoid getting teary. There were a lot of brave people who were tired of seeing injustice being done. Now we have to make sure that we get to Tazewell before midnight. I wanted to come back to Tazewell, and the only family that I felt connected to was uh, the family of John and Carol Biggs. We saw each other at my mother's life celebration after her death in December, and they said, you must come back. It's been 33 years now that mother is gone, and my father as well had died in February 215. I feel a sense of urgency. I decided to, to make this happen every year that I would have a birthday. My mother would remind me that she died when she was giving birth to me. After a 36 hour labor, she, I came into the world, but she at the same time left her body. And she used to tell me that she remembers being drawn to a, a tunnel of golden light and it felt very peaceful and very calm. And she could see her body uh, on the table below and she could see uh, the midwives slapping her and saying, Anne, you have to come back. You cannot leave us now. And they were slapping her and she said to me, I made a conscious decision to actually re-enter my body and stay alive. These were the walls that went around the house. It was a big Victorian house like the one on the other side. Do you think I should just go and knock? These are not places where you trespass, by the way. <laughs> My father, who had done very well with his helicopter business, one day someone overheard him speaking, not fondly, obviously, of the pilot unions. The next day he went back to work and someone had put dynamite underneath his helicopter. Three weeks before this happened, he'd had an argument with his insurer. And so the helicopter happened to be uninsured. And there it was, in hundreds of thousands of pieces, blown up with dynamite. Anyway, my father was uninsured, and he decided to start renovating the house and, and taking a little break from flying. About six years later, he was going bankrupt. The bank took the property, as they do with, with bankruptcies, and a gentleman bought the house. One day, he went into the house and turned on the lights. 
and it created a short circuit. The house caught fire and burned through the night. It's wallpaper. It's the library. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's the it's only thing, thing that's left of the library, of the, of the house. house. Yes. I had romantic ideas about him maybe coming to Tazewell to take my mother as far away as he could from civilization, basically. But in reality, it wasn't so romantic. He had a job. The only thing I regret is not having been able to knock on the door and ask if I could go in and walk through those rooms. I think she couldn't deal with living so isolated in such a small town. I know I wouldn't be able to. I totally understand. You can tell in the letters that she was bored. She was like, oh, it's so nice to go to Williamsburg and see something cultural and have a walk through a historic city and go to a concert. She was bored here. She was an English lady and she wanted to work in the arts. I learned yesterday that she was doing illustrations for the local newspaper here. She was doing things like painting murals, for example, this mural, which I think she painted in 1970. Yes, the date is there. This was the fence of the lady who, she mounted the fence upside down and so that children wouldn't crawl over to her yard and dogs wouldn't dare cross over it, except for my Doberman Pinscher who crossed over it and slit his tummy from top to bottom on the upside down fence. We're holding up traffic. Look at everybody's, <laughs> suddenly there's traffic. Oops, sorry. The school bus picked us up, all the children at this point. And it always came, the bus. It was one of the secure things in my life. It looks a little bit haunted, no? I don't know if anyone lives in it. Does someone live in this house? No? Yeah, he looks really well. I'm sure that families lived here, maybe till yesterday. It's kind of freaky. A lot of people live in trailers in this uh, area, which is very depressed. I was a proud little Leo, and I didn't uh, want anyone to know what was happening. The fact that there was no heat in the house, the fact that we were heating everything with a, with a fireplace. I remember having waited for everyone to leave the corridor of the high school where the lockers were, where the children put their belongings. And then I would open my locker. I was very embarrassed by the smell of, of smoke. I associated the smell of smoke with poverty. I feared the cold, the hunger, and those were things that I faced in Taswell as a little girl. You know, people Someone called. Yeah, and people vandalized the I would bus. I never do that. No, but we had no No, teams. good. Mm -hmm. You're the chief. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll call off the rest of the dogs. Okay, okay. perfect. <laughs> Whoa, on a summer night. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh. No. <laughs> you know, by the time I was 13, I had classmates that were pregnant. I had a very small group of friends. I wasn't involved in school activities and sports groups. But the school was like a sanctuary. Anything that made for regular hours and adults that I could look up to became a sort of temple in this little town. When I was a little girl, the library was another one of my sanctuaries, my little temples. My first research as well from a sexual point of view happened here. I discovered in the S section the joy of sex. And I liked the book so much that I ended up taking it away from the library and never bringing it back. My first and only theft. It was a window to the outside world. I love to read. On the left, I think so. Bye. This is so scary now. <gasps> Trump digs coal. Trump is a tragedy. Very scary. Insanity. When people are not educated, they, they find themselves voting for people like Trump. Vive la bibliothèque. <laughs> if I was to encounter a Bethany that did not escape the mountains, I think I might be 
the mayor of Tazewell. I am a sheriff. Be careful. In 1970, my little sister was born. We were then four girls. My father was more and more absent because of the flying. My mother happened to have a love affair with a, with a black man. My father learned of this love affair and he was extremely angry and upset and basically finished the relationship with my mother that night. This love affair that my mother had ended up leading to the murder of this man. I was told that he was shot in a phone booth. We'll never know the truth. At that time in Tazewell, Virginia, racism was still very much part of daily life. My mother's divorce case, which there was definitely a trial, a trial that did not go in my mother's favor because there was a black man involved. And of course, because my mother had to help to spark America's civil rights revolution by being this woman who went and sat at the white counter in 1960. So the judge basically decided that she was probably not very mentally stable. She was denied the right to see her children, which I find horrible, and so did she. As the judge ruled, I would stay in the mountains with Daddy. You came down the stairs. The casing shook underfoot as it always had, but harder now with the weight of your past. Father Strange pulled himself out of the big blue car. On the porch, he picked up your last bag, then placed his hand on my head, kind but weighty. He turned and walked down the stairs slowly, one at a time, one at a time, granting you the last minutes. When you hugged me, the tears slipped down your cheeks and I felt them go cold on my cheek. I didn't know then that we would again be together. You came down the stairs, shaking underfoot for the last time. When you turned to look back, you blew a kiss. I caught it between my lips and savored the sweetness on my tongue. Father Strange opened the car door for you and then shut it hard. I was 17 when I wrote this and sent it to my mother. The day my mother left is probably the most distinct uh, memory that I have of Tazewell. I was four. You know, in these parts of the world, people say that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves you. I realized pretty early on that it wasn't going to be Jesus that was going to save me. <laughs> I knew that love would save me and get me out of Tazewell. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. Yeah. <laughs> It makes a lot of sense to me, more sense than ever having coming back to this place, no? Because it could have broken me, this little town. Instead, it made me who I am. I love that <laughs> it's so crazy, this thing. I love it. I was very focused on leaving. I was focused on creating a plan, and I did. By the time I was 15, the plan was realized. In fact, coming back to Tazewell made me realize that I had been denied a childhood. And I don't regret it, really. I felt very prepared to do just about anything. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. I don't remember the words. Listen to those bells. Let's use that. I have to wait another hour then. <laughs>